Stay all day, Doc. Now tuned in to the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve is yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. That is the go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. And then we put all this together to a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques all underneath the umbrella of one unifying philosophy that is called work on your game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is how to size people up. What does that mean? I'll explain that in a second, but before I do that, let me tell you before I forget that I send out a daily motivation text every single day, free of charge to everyone who's in my texting community. So if you would like to receive that text, free of charge, straight to your phone every single day, all you gotta do is text me at this number, 305-384-6894. As I just told you, it is free. It'll be every single day, as long as my fingers are working and I can send those texts. And Here's an unadvertised bonus of texting me is that you can actually respond to any one of those texts and you will be talking directly to me. I actually do read the responses to the text and I do actually reply to people. So if you have a question, a comment, concern, a complaint, a criticism of anything that I either text you or anything you heard on this show or whatever, or a question about something that's going on in your own life, you can actually re reply to one of those text messages. You'll be talking directly to me. And that number is listed down below also in the show notes. So this topic about how to size people up, this is a this is in direct relation to, this is a, a sister episode to what I talked about in episodes 1993, 1994, and 1995 about how to assess the character of the people with whom you deal. Now I wanna make sure that I'm being clear here. When I talked about how to judge character in episodes 1993 through 95, and what I'm gonna talk about here today about sizing people up, this is not about you being the, it's not about you being the judge and jury of another person's character. In other words, saying, well, this person is a good person or a bad person, or they deserve this, they deserve this because of the quality of their character or whatever you think about their character because as far as I'm concerned, no man, and when I say man, I mean humans, no mere mortal is qualified to judge the character of another person in such a way that you are either condemning them or exalting them. But when I say judging another person's character, what I mean is you understanding what is this person really about at their core so that you can make better decisions about how far to deal with them or how far to not deal with them. So when I say judge, I'm just talking about for your own personal use, not for you to, again, condemn or exalt another person because I personally do not believe any human being is qualified to do so for another person. Now, if you think a person is a bad person, here's what you do. You stay away from them. Just don't deal with them. Don't do business with them. Don't trust them any further than you can throw them. Do not go and make some grand uh, announcement or statement about how that person is a bad person or you're a better person than them or judging their or moralizing. Just don't get into the moralizing thing. I told you how I'm, I made it clear, let's say is a better word of saying it. I made it clear that I am not into moralizing and I told you about that in episode 1955, how to protect your freedom from the moralizers who are out there. So I'm definitely not suggesting that you become one. So everything I told you in those three episodes, 93 through 95, and what I'm telling you here today is for your own personal internal use. This is not for you to announce what you think about another person because it doesn't really matter what you think. So this topic here today is specifically about your skill of observation and your ability to see people for who they actually are, not as who they present themselves to be. Again, for your own personal reference. And the better you get at this, the better you will be in choosing which people with whom you will deal and the fewer mistakes you will make in relationship building and your overall interpersonal relations. Because I'm sure all of us have made mistakes, especially those of you who think you're pretty good at judging people's character, you're pretty good at sizing people up. You, I'm preaching to the choir to you all in these episodes, you've probably made some mistakes when it comes to judging people's character and sizing people up. That's how you got good at it, by messing up. And those of you who have not made too many mistakes yet, you eventually will, but hopefully I can shorten your learning curve by referring you back to those three episodes I told you about before if you didn't listen to them already and making sure that you listen closely and take notes on what I'm going to say here in today's episode. So let's get right into this masterclass topic once again. It's how to size people up. Point number one, see the mind and not the body or the mind and not the person. What does this mean? This means 
you need to look into and try to be as introspective as possible in figuring out what is the thought process and the decision making process that goes behind another that goes behind a person's uh, actions not just the actions that they take but what is the thought process behind the actions what is the thought process behind this person what is the what's really going on in the brain of this person that you see in front of you because you can see a person who is a really big tall strong person who looks like they could break you in half but if their mind is not wired for them to actually do it then are they as much of a threat to you as, as they appear to be probably not and they could be a person who looks very small and puny and probably couldn't uh, break a probably couldn't punch their way out of a wet paper bag but if their mind is they have a, a Napoleon complex and then they could destroy you in other ways even if they couldn't do it physically. And so you need to understand what's going on in the mind of the person because the mind controls the body. The body does not control the mind, the mind controls the body. So if you've ever seen a person whose physical tools far outstripped their accomplishments, meaning they have a lot more appear, apparently, a lot more tangible ability than they have actual achievements, or on the other hand, have you ever seen a person whose outward accomplishments far outweighed what you expect of them given their physical presentation. We've all seen this. People who've done a lot more than you would think just looking at them and people who've done a lot less than you would expect just looking at them. Why is this? It's because it's not about the outward presentation. Now, while there are times that a person's outward presentation and their accomplishments, achievements, capabilities match up, there are other times when it's completely incongruent. The way that a person looks and what they actually do and how they present themselves and how they think and the actions that they take are completely out of balance with what you would expect from looking at them by your own personal judgment. That is because the brain controls the body and sometimes they match up and sometimes they don't. This is just the randomness of life. So we've, since we've all seen this on both sides, maybe you see a bit of one of these in yourself even. Maybe you see yourself as someone who is far uh, outpaced your physical capabilities or your tangible capabilities or your outward appearance or maybe you're on the other end where maybe you feel like you're a lot better than what you've actually achieved. We talked about that in the episode on the AWOL effect. That was episode number 1184. If you haven't listened to that already, it is linked down below in the show notes. Now, why is this? Why does this even exist? Is because all human beings and by extension, the destinies of all of us as human beings are much more a reflection of our mindsets than they are a reflection of our physical tools, resources, or capabilities. Let me repeat what I just said. I'm gonna say it slower this time. All human beings, and by extension, the destiny of each of us as an individual is much more a reflection of our mindset than it is a reflection of our physical tools, our tangible resources, or our capabilities. Where you end up in life is gonna be much more de determined by how you think than it is by how much money you have, where you're from, what neighborhood you live in, who your parents are, how much money you have, and all of those tangible things that most people use as their reasons slash excuses for a lack of accomplishment is much more about your mindset. You change your mindset, all the physical tools and assets and skills and abilities and whatever you feel like you need you will either find them or you will make it happen without them when your mind is in the right space. And if your mind is in the wrong space, you could have all the physical tools, all the capabilities, all the opportunities, everything set up, a yellow brick road set up for you to be successful and you could still fail. Again, have you not seen this? You ever seen somebody who seemingly had everything set up for them to be successful and they still blew it? Of course you have. Have you ever seen someone who seemingly had everything working against them and they still succeeded? Of course you have. Why is this? mindset. Everything comes back to the way that we think, not in the things that you have. And if we had to put those on a scale, the mindset is way, way heavier. Mindset will be on the bottom on a scale, like a seesaw. And the things that you have, they'll be up in the air right? because the mindset matters a whole lot more. So when you want to get a read on another person, and I think we all should want to get a read on other people, the better you can read other people, the better you'll do in dealing with them or not dealing with them. Don't look at how tall somebody is. Don't look at the car that they drive or the clothes that they wear. Even though these things do, do tell you something, not that they don't matter at all, but it is not giving you the most important thing about them. Look at how they think. You can't really look at how a person thinks. This is why you have to be very observant. You have to notice little things that they will give away that is coming from their mindset that they might not even be able to explain to you even if they wanted to, and they might not want to explain to you even though they could. So you want to try to get a read on how a person thinks, not on what they have. 
listen to how a person talks because usually the way people talk is a direct reflection of what's going on in their brain. So listen to the words that people use, even though we all know that words are a dime a dozen and talk is cheap. Still, does, that doesn't mean that what people say is not telling you something about them. So this is these are the dichotomies. These are the paradoxes that you have to understand about life. Talk is cheap. But at the same time, when people talk, they're telling you a whole lot about the way that they think. So this is why you have to not weigh it so much that you're going to believe everything a person says. But at the same time, listen to what they say, because they're cluing you in on some things about them. And this is the again, this is the kind of kind of stuff that sometimes makes people frustrated because they want somebody like Dre. Just tell me exactly how to know how another person is, how another person is, what, how I size up another person's character. Well, I'm telling you here, there are parts that you need to weigh less and parts you need to weigh more. But you need to pay attention to the same thing while, while keeping in mind what they say doesn't matter that much. But what they say does matter a lot. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is just how it works. So when you want to get a read on the person, listen to how they talk. Figure out how they're thinking. Look at what they're attracted to. You'll learn a lot more about a person by studying the way they think, at least as best you can, than by looking at the things that they have. Why is this? Because another reason is human beings, we have all learned, we all learned by the age of 12, how to put on an outward display that will control the way that other people look at us, how they interact with us and how they judge us. We all learn this at a very early age that we can put on a certain we can put on a certain display and display a certain facade, whether it's real or not, to the world that will cause people to respond to us a certain way. We all know how to do this inherently subconsciously. So because of this, this is why you don't want to put too much emphasis on how people present themselves because we all learn how to present ourselves in whatever way will allow us to go along to get along in life. But you'll learn a lot more if you can start to get into a person's brain by listening to what they say, trying to figure out how they think. When you learn this, you'll come to understand that a person's physical resources are merely a distraction from the real story of a human being. Never, that applies to all people. Even if their physical resources are a direct reflection of who they are, it's still not the best story. The best story is getting into the brain. And the quickest way to get into somebody's brain is to listen to, listen to them talk. Because the brain and the mouth are actually very close together. Point number two. Today's topic, once again, is how to size people up. Number two. Pay attention to the little things. What makes a person laugh? What do they find funny? What does, what does a person take seriously? Maybe more serious than expected. But what's something that somebody takes seriously that you didn't think was that a big that big of a deal, but they is a big deal to them, apparently. What is somebody really consistent about? What is somebody maybe very loose or flippant about that you would think they might want to be a little bit more consistent or serious about? How does this person interact with strangers? How do they interact with random people? How is this person when it comes to making eye contact, handshaking, having small talk with other people? How comfortable is someone when you put them in a unique, unfamiliar situation? Does a person seem uneasy in certain environments? Well, you notice all these notice that all these questions that I just gave you, they're very simple observations, meaning things that you can notice very easily if you just pay attention to other people. But the thing is, it's only possible for you to make these observations when you stop thinking so much about yourself. Turn off your constant internal conversation that's focused on you and really start observing other people. So the reason why this is this is kind of like insider information I'm giving you here is that most people are incapable of doing it. Actually, let me back up. They're not incapable of doing it. Most people just don't do it because we are much more focused on ourselves. We're all narcissistic in that way is that most of the time when we have time to think, we're thinking about ourselves, which is not a bad idea. But at the same time, if you want to get better at sizing people up and judging character and really figuring out who you're dealing with, you got to turn off the conversation that's about you and really focus on the other people around you. You'll learn a whole lot more about people really quickly if you would just start observing. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to be this eloquent speaker. You don't have to write books. You don't have to be great at You don't even have to be that great at asking questions, honestly. All you got to do is just pay attention and just notice things. But you can't be thinking about yourself while you're looking at other people because you're not going to notice things. Because your brain can only focus on one thing at a time. I've told you that how many times here on the show. Focus is the force multiplier. I told you about this in episode number 1193. The longer you can stay focused on something, the stronger that focus becomes. But focus is also focus is also a thing that you are limited in that you can only be doing you can only be focusing on one thing at a time. So what are you going to focus on? Are you going to focus on you? Or are you going to focus on sizing up other people? You can't do both at once. So you got to choose. 
So this is why turning off that internal conversation at times is necessary. It's not that the internal conversation is a bad idea because if you're not thinking about yourself, nobody else is either. So you just got to figure out what's your balance going to be and how much time you want to spend focusing on you, how much time you want to focus on other people. What's your outcome? What are you trying to get to? The better you can answer that question, the easier it will be for you to decide and discern when am I going to focus on me and when am I going to focus on these other people with whom I'm dealing. And again, it doesn't have to be every human being you come across, but I would think maybe your, your children, your significant other, people you do business with, maybe you have business partners, you have staff members, you got people you want to sell things to, you should probably pay some attention to them because the better you know how they're thinking, the better you can get what you want in life. So it doesn't have to be every human on the planet. You just got to pick and choose. This is why you have to be discerning about what you're doing with your time, what you're doing with your energy, your attention, your focus. All right, these are the five forms of investment. I told you about this in episode 609. Discernment, by the way, is episode 1431, your skill of perception and judgment. You see how all of these topics weave in together? You can become a very sharp judge of character and a very insightful person when it comes to other humans if you could just train yourself to pay attention. And here's the good news about all of this. You already have the skill of paying attention to other people. And here's how I'll prove it. Because you know a whole lot about yourself. See, you're using that skill of paying attention, you're just using it on yourself all the time. Now you're using 100% of that resource on you. If you would just divert a little bit of those resources towards other people, you will become a very sharp and very astute judge and uh, observer of human nature. Just divert a little bit of those resources towards someone other than you. Train that skill on other people and you will, what's going to happen is you're going to almost start to feel psychic when it comes to dealing with other people because you'll be able to see their actions before they even take them. And why are you going to feel psychic? Because so few other people ever do this because every one of us, every human being you come across is tuned into WIIFM and listen to it all day. That WIIFM is what's in it for me. Everybody's only thinking about themselves. So if you could just turn that off and think about anyone other than you, you're doing the opposite of most other people and that's actually pretty good advice right there. Look what everybody else is doing, do the opposite. Now, it doesn't even matter what area we're talking about. Point number three, today's topic once again is how to size people up. Number three, remember that your most valuable resource is time. If you have forgotten, I talked about that in episode 609. Everything and everyone reveals itself in due time. This is a fact. Let me say that one once more. Write it down. Everything and everyone will reveal itself in due time. But you have to be vigilant. You have to be patient. You have to be disciplined. And you have to be observant to finally see that uh, reveal when it finally comes. And you got to be paying attention when it happens because you might miss it. This is why you need to be vigilant about how you utilize your time and how you allow your own time to be used by others. When you have time on your side, you can be patient and you can allow situations and people to reveal themselves to you. But when time is forced upon you, you lose this luxury. This is why if you read a book like The Art of War by Sun Tzu, he talks about this. He says when an enemy wants to battle, we retreat and we don't let them fight us. We don't let them engage. When an enemy wants to retreat, we engage and we force them to deal with us. When the enemy is at ease and at rest, we harass them and we make them move around. When the enemy wants to harass and make us move around, we get away to the point that they can't even get near us. Basically, you give them the opposite. You give the enemy the opposite of what they want. And this is why forced time unravels people. When someone feels like their time is being forced, they can feel anxious. They can unravel. They can maybe reveal things that they don't really want to reveal. And any of anyone any of you who's ever been involved in negotiations, if you ever, any of you's ever worked in like big contract negotiations, any of you's ever dealt with court proceedings, you know that the timing of situations can really throw people off. The facts of the situation doesn't have to change at all, but when you can throw people's timing off, you can throw them off completely and you can get control of a situation just by controlling time. And this is why it's so important that you be vigilant about how you're using your time and how you're allowing your time to be used. When you control time, you can control an entire situation. Why? Because time is the most viable resource we all have as human beings. And if you want to see that proven out, think of a time in your life when someone threw your time off, when they made you anxious or they disturbed you by disrupting your timing of a situation. Or if you've ever disrupted the timing of another person's situation, look how it threw them off. When you forced someone into action in a moment that they weren't expecting to have to take action, it threw them off completely and people reveal a lot when they're thrown off. 
when they can't prepare for a situation. So you can use this offensively, you can use this defensively, but you gotta have control of your own time so that it doesn't get used against you too often. This is why you gotta be vigilant about time. When you have time on your side, you can be patient, things will reveal themselves to you, and when time is forced upon you, then you will reveal yourself to other people. So in any situation when you're dealing with another human being, the person who has more time on their side, or at least the illusion of having more time on their side, usually has control of the situation. When someone is in an urgent situation, meaning they don't have time on their side, they have to do something about something like right now, much gets revealed if you are paying attention. If you're really paying attention to the moment when someone is in urgency, you can find out a lot about them, but you have to be very observant. Again, you can't just be thinking about you. You gotta be just keeping your mind blank and allowing yourself to read what you're actually seeing, not what you think you see and not what, you just, not what your emotions want you to see. Another challenge that human beings have. Different conversation though for a different day. Actually, we just had that conversation yesterday. But all that said, let's recap today's class, which is how to size people up. This is related to the episodes on character, episodes 1993 through 1995. The better you get at sizing people up, the better you'll be in dealing with people or making decisions not to deal with someone. Point number one, see the mind and not the body. Have you ever seen a person whose physical tools were far more than their accomplishments or vice versa? That is because it is not about the physical tools that is not someone's physical tools that determines their level of success in life, even though many people think that. It is the person's mind. The mindset can create the physical tools and it can overcome a lack of physical tools or a poor mindset can negate all the great physical tools that someone has available to them simply because that person doesn't have the mind to use them. All human beings are much more a reflection of our mindsets and a reflection of our physical resources. Point number two, pay attention to the little things. What makes somebody laugh? What do they take seriously? Where are they consistent? How do they interact with random situations? How, do they make eye contact? How comfortable are they in unique situations? Do they seem uneasy in certain places? Notice that these questions are all simple observations. Anybody can do them. You don't have to have any specialized knowledge to notice these things. But the only way you can actually notice them is that you got to turn off your constant internal conversation that is focused on yourself and focusing on other people. You already have the skill because you've been focusing on yourself your whole life. Now just take a little bit of those resources and focus on anyone other than you. Point number three, remember your most valuable resource and that's time. Everything will reveal itself in due time. The challenge for many of us is we don't ever feel like we have any time. So you don't have time on your side. Therefore, you can't use this tool as well as you would be able to use it if you got more control of your time. But don't worry. I got a master class coming on that exact topic, how to get more control of your time. When time is forced upon you, you lose the luxury of patience. And when you can force somebody else's time, now you have the luxury of patience. So if you want to use this point that I'm, using, I'm sharing with you right here, Get control of your time. Look at your calendar, look at your to-do list, look at your schedule, look at your everyday life. Take notes of what you're doing for 24 hours a day and figure out how you can be more efficient and have more control over your time. Because when you can control time, you control pretty much anything. All that said, send me a text. You can get my daily motivation text straight to your phone every single day, free of charge. My number is 305-384-6894. And when you are ready, if you are already ready, to take things to the next level, working with me directly, you listen to the show, you keep listening to the show, but you're ready to take things to the next level, then go to workonyourgameuniversity.com so you can learn how you can work with me directly, whether it be in my group mastermind, whether it be working with me one-on-one, -on -one, and seeing what other options we have available. That is again at workonyourgameuniversity.com. We are, actually by the time you hear this, I probably already made uh, those offers at working your game university i already made them a lot better than they were even before they were already amazing but i'm making them even better because i want to leave no doubt i don't i want you to feel like you're an idiot if you don't go to the next level with me that's my goal if you don't feel like an idiot for not going to the next level with me yet that means i haven't made the offer good enough yet but i'm gonna keep going but at the same time you're waiting on me to do that don't wait because as i just told you time is of the essence and you ain't got forever you're on the clock all that said working your game university.com work on your game dre all day. Yeah.